It all started when I woke up to the sound of someone hammering on my apartment door. That was the first fright I got that night, heart pounding my chest as I grabbed the bat I kept under my bed and headed towards the door. First thing I do is look through the peephole to make sure it's not anyone sketchy, but I'm greeted by the sight of one of my neighbors. She looks terrified. She's covered in blood, and I can see just through the peephole that her face is a mess. I open up the door. She runs inside and immediately says, You gotta get me out of here. My boyfriend's trying to kill me. I start to ask her what happened, and she says something like, There's no time. Just please get me out of here. I swear to God, he'll kill you too for just helping me. That was what sent me into a straight up panic. Because if a guy was willing to beat his girlfriend up that badly, Lord knows that he'd be willing to put me in the ground. I just grabbed my car keys, ran downstairs with the girl following close behind, jumped into my car, then took off into the night. I remember asking her if she had anywhere I could take her, like a friend's or a relative's or something. She said no, and the best thing for us to do would be to drive to a motel so she could call the cops from there. So that's exactly what I did. I drove us to a motel and booked us a room. The clerk was obviously just as concerned as I was, but all it took was to explain that her boyfriend had tried to off her, and they were like, jeez, make sure you guys call the cops at least. The girl, whose name I didn't know at that point, I just knew she was a neighbor, said that she'd go up to the room and call them, then asked me to get her some ice from the ice machine so she could deal with the swelling on her face. When I got to the room, she said the cops would be there ASAP, took the ice, put it on her face, then just burst into tears. I tried my best to reassure her, telling her she was safe and stuff, then when she finally calmed down, I asked her what actually happened back at her apartment. She told me her boyfriend was abusive, and that she'd been planning on leaving for a while, but that night was the night she'd finally got the courage to gather to announce it to him. She said he walked into their bedroom to find her packing a bag, and not long after that, everything went to chaos. She started helping herself to the little bottle of liquor from the mini bar, but not after promising she'd pay me back for them once everything had blown over. I had no reason to disbelieve her at the time. I mean, I felt like we had a kind of bond established already, but I abstained because I thought I'd be driving back to the apartment pretty soon. I asked her if she was good to wait on her own while the cops drove out to her, but she asked me if I'd stay to keep her safe. She then made the point that if her boyfriend found the blood on my apartment door, she assured me that she'd left some on there while hammering on it, that he'd know she'd been there and he'd try to attack me, or worse. I'll be honest, I thought it was a pretty good point at the time. I hadn't seen the blood myself, but she was so covered in it that I believed her when she said that there was some on my door. Anyway, about an hour goes by and the cops still haven't showed up, and the motel rooms were arranged in a horseshoe shape so we'd have seen them rolling into the parking lot if they had. I asked her to call them back to see what was going on, because obviously it was a really urgent situation, and I know that there was basically no way for the boyfriend in finding us, but I was still really paranoid that he would somehow. That's when the inconsistency started, because she gave me some lame duck of a reply like, I'm sure they'll be here soon. If that was me, I'd have called 911 again if they hadn't shown up within like 10 minutes. So what was she so calm about that she was just cool with waiting for them for like an hour at that point? I put it down to booze and at that point I was okay with waiting too. It wasn't like I had anywhere to be. I sure couldn't just go back to my apartment with that psycho supposedly just a few doors down. But that's also about the same time that I started checking out the amount of blood on her nightshirt. She had like an oversized t-shirt and girl boxers on and like I said earlier, they were drenched with blood. But also was some blood splattered too, like little spots here and there. She had this cut over her eye and she had a nasty busted lip but it looked like way too much blood for just those small wounds. So I asked her if she had any other kind of injuries, like an abdominal wound of some kind that might account for all the blood on her. She said no, and that it was all from the busted lip in her eye. And immediately I start smelling nonsense. I asked her again what exactly had happened back at the apartment and she started getting weirdly defensive about what she told me. I was starting to think it wasn't quite the abusive spouse kind of story that she told me the first time around, but I had no inkling of what was really going on. 
That being said, I was getting tired of waiting for the cops to show, so I decided to call them back myself. All I had on me was my wallet, my phone, and my car keys, the only three things I'd had time to stuff into the pockets of my shorts before fleeing the apartment. But when I take my phone out to call the cops, she says something along the lines of, What are you doing? I state the obvious, I'm about to call the cops back, and she's like, don't. I don't know if it was the way she was looking at me, the way she spoke, or the way she sort of tensed up when I told her that I was about to do that, but the mood in the room just shifted completely. I asked her why not, then just went right back to dialing 911. But by the time the operator spoke down the line, I looked up and saw she had a knife in her hand. She just said, Hang up. Now. So I did. I never had a knife pulled on me at that point, and I can't overstate how terrifying it was. It wasn't even just the knife either. It was the overwhelming creepy sensation of knowing that all wasn't what it seemed. I wasn't hiding from the threat. I was with the threat. I'll be honest here. I basically begged her not to hurt me. And to my relief, she said she wouldn't as long as I drove her to the Canadian border. Given this was in Detroit, the border isn't all that far, but I didn't want to catch charges for aiding and abetting or whatever, so I knew I had to think of something to stop that from happening. It's not like I knew I couldn't tell the cops that I'd been threatened or whatever, but I also knew that the longer I spent in this girl's company, the more chances I'd have of being stabbed. So, I tell the girl that I drive her to the border, but that I needed to get something to eat first. I play it like I wanted to stop somewhere on the way, knowing she'd reason me down to getting something delivered from a 24-hour joint. She also stated that she'd be the one going down to pick the food up, as she didn't want me having the chance to sound the alarm. That's where she messed up, because she didn't seem to realize, to my infinite relief, that I could order from DoorDash and put something in the notes about needing the cops called to the motel. My whole plan hinged on there being a driver around that late at night, but thank god there was, and I was even able to show her the order without bringing up the notes section that mentioned needing 911 call to the motel. And the cops played it perfectly too. They showed up without any lights and sirens on, didn't park in the lot, walked up to the motel room without being spotted from the window, and then just knocked on the door like they were a delivery driver. She walks over, opens up the door, then boom, they had a gun and a taser drawn on her before she even knew what was happening. She had the knife tucked into the back of her girl boxers, but the cops were wise to her drawing on them, and she hit the floor hard after they hit her with the taser. Turned out they'd been looking for her because, get this, she was the abusive partner who'd stabbed her boyfriend almost to death before finding some poor schmuck, i.e. me, to drive her to the border. Dude almost bled to death in their apartment but managed to crawl to another neighbor's place to get help. You should have seen the amount of blood in the hallway when I got back to my apartment building and the whole place was crawling with cops and forensic gear. I thought I might be able to drive over to a friend's place to stay the night, you know, contaminating a crime scene or whatever, but they had this section of the corridor closed off so I could actually get into where I lived. The cops came to my apartment in the morning to take my statement down and to fill me in on what they thought had happened. That's how I found out exactly what the deal was. It was 100% the craziest, most frightening thing that's ever happened to me, ever, in my life. And just the fact that I was part of it seems completely surreal to me. But the thing that sticks with me is how easily I swallowed her nonsense story at first. How I thought it was helping someone I knew, someone I could trust. When in reality, one wrong move, and I might not actually be around to tell you this. I'm 24, male, and still a virgin, a fact that severely bothers me in recurring phases. And one of those, a couple of months ago, I boldly decided to finally inquire the services of an escort girl. Prostitution is legal in my country, so I wasn't planning on breaking any law. I got in contact with a pretty blonde Russian girl in her early 20s that I found on a website dedicated to private escort girls and their insertions. We decided to meet a couple of days later. 
She appeared quite short-spoken, almost blank, but I figured that was just a habit you'd evolve in that line of work. If I had to handle lusting guys on an everyday basis, I'd probably be like that too. I took that particular day off from my pretty stuffed work plan and drove to the nearest big city where we arranged to meet. See, I live in a semi-rural student town where I couldn't really find anyone to my liking. It took me a good two-hour train drive to get to the town, which I really wasn't that familiar with. Strangely enough, she told me that I would only get to her address a couple of hours before the date, for reasons that I couldn't really follow. So here I was in this big city, pretty lost, and almost two hours before my date. I had noticed that my phone battery was almost dead, so I frantically texted my date that I would need the address this minute if she still wanted things to happen. I turned off my phone and restarted it every 10 minutes to check for further messages, yet I didn't get any. The coward in me was satisfied. I'd have enough reasons to back up from this insane plan and just drive home. But before I finished that thought, she then messaged me with the address, which luckily wasn't that far off from the main train station. I started to reluctantly walk towards that location, checking my phone with Google Maps for every turn. After about 10 minutes, I arrived at my destination, according to my phone, but I wasn't really sure on where to go from here. There was a turn into some kind of back alley, an apartment, so I figured that I had to go there. To tell you the truth, I was beginning to sweat bullets at this point. I was beginning to slightly shake. I definitely wasn't ready and felt very uncomfortable. I still had 40 minutes before the appointed time, and so I decided to sort of roam the area before I would note my date. I must have looked like a madman or as if I had just committed a murder. I walked around the area in circles about two times and then notified the girl. I was being told that I had to get myself a room in a motel that was in that very alley after another left turn and that she would then go to the respective room after I told her my number. I was relieved. I'm a student. I only had just about the money for the services that she was offering. I surely didn't have the money to pay for some extra rooms. So I was already on my way back, five minutes in texting her that I'm truly sorry for the misunderstanding and that I didn't bring any extra cash for motel rooms. Yet she stopped me dead in my tracks and told me that the room was already calculated in her services. Oh fuck me. Well I went back and I made that additional left turn and there it was some two-story cubicle form motel hidden in the midst of the other buildings surrounding it. It appeared very weird, as if it wouldn't belong here or was just randomly dropped at this place. I reluctantly approached it, even though I was beginning to get annoyed. All I wanted was a friendly person to discreetly help me in this once-in-a-lifetime step, and now it seemed that I had to deal with some rundown whorehouse clerk who would be in the perfect knowledge that I was here because I wanted to pay for sex. The door of the building was open, and there seemed to be some kind of counter. Yet, the building didn't seem like something you would just walk inside like a customer. So, I told my date my doubts, but she insisted. I waited for some time, and then suddenly a man appeared. He guided a minor-looking girl into that building. It was only after the whole incident that I realized the implications of this. I guess I thought she was his family, but she wasn't even in the same ethnic group. I inquired about her room, and his pupils enlarged. He looked scrawny, nervous, and kind of out of it. As you can imagine hearing this, you might recognize these red flags instantly, but given the fact that I was so scared that I felt like a bag of nerves, my guard was severely lowered. Also, I'm a semi-big and muscular guy, so I'm not necessarily used to feeling physically threatened. The reason that I'm a virgin isn't my looks, I'm antisocial. Weirdly enough, he told me that unfortunately, all the rooms were occupied at the moment. I wrote my date just that, and was told that I should wait a second. Just five minutes after that, 
She texted me that she was now in the process of making herself nice for me, and that I was supposed to go up to the second story and knock at door two. And so I did. I entered the building. The man from before was not there. Nobody seemed to be there. My first impression was that it looked weirdly sterile, bright one-sided color patterns. I hesitantly walked up the stairs that were directly next to the entrance, step by step. It was dead silent. If all the rooms were in fact occupied at that moment, they sure were a silent bunch. I knocked at the door. It took suspiciously long for the person to open the door, but she was telling me that she was still prepping herself up after all. I heard her approaching the door and some kind of noise. Some clicking sound or the sound of something closing. She finally opened the door, and to my surprise, there didn't stand the attractive 20-something Russian girl that I texted with, but some ugly, stocky, at least 50-year-old hag with leather-like skin. Before I even comprehended the situation, I had already stepped inside of the room out of reflex, and I noticed the door closing behind me. Fight or flight then kicked in, even though I didn't feel any particular danger coming from that person. She tried to lure me inside of the room with those expressionless eyes, the dead friendliness of a lizard. I must have stuttered like an idiot trying to find a way out. I don't exactly remember what I told her. I was giving her some bullshit excuse on why I needed to leave for a second, again promising that I'd be back ASAP, and I noticed that she was hardly able to comprehend full sentences in the native language, so I just made my best attempt of giving a reassuring hand gesture then pointing to the door and said five minutes and then immediately left without waiting for her reaction. I practically ran down the stairs, arrived at the first floor, and then out of nowhere, the same scrawny pimp from before then creeped up on me from behind and asked me if I made any progress in finding my date. Without stopping, I just grabbed the door handle and I told him that unfortunately, progress has not been made and then left the building speed walking out of that godforsaken place. I texted her once again to confirm that I didn't just confuse the room. I didn't. After I confronted her and told her that I wasn't going to get scammed, I expected to get something along the lines of, you have to pay me, or my protectors will do such and such in return. But instead, I got no reply at all. I don't know what I walked into that day, Maybe it wasn't even that insidious. Maybe I was just scammed, which is frankly bad enough, but the whole thing gave me the creeps. Friendly piece of advice. If you want to solicit adult services, pay reasonable prices, and don't ever enter any fucking motels. This happened in the summer and I believe I was about 12 at the time. I was staying in a hotel in a fairly large city with my mom and my younger brother. We were visiting our extended family but chose not to stay in their house. My brother is younger than me by a decent amount so I was usually told to keep an eye on him. On the day we arrived my mom told me to do just that while she checked us in and received our room card. So my brother and I sat down on the couch in the lobby and relaxed a little bit. While we were sitting, a man in about his mid-forties walked into the hotel. The couch was facing the hotel door, so I got a good look at him. I remember that he was very average looking. Describing his features and details could generate several different images. The guy comes in and sits on the couch opposite ours. I didn't think anything of it until I realized that he didn't go up to the counter first. He just came in and sat down. It made me feel a little uncomfortable. I thought that he might have followed us in. Thankfully, my mom called us over and told us that our room was ready. We left the lobby and went to our room. Shortly after, we left the hotel to go meet family. I forgot about the man for the rest of the day. We returned at about 7 and my mom told us that we could go swimming in the hotel pool. We all went to our rooms, changed, and went to the pool. A few minutes after we got into the water, the same man from before walked in and sat down. He was wearing jeans and a sweater, so he definitely wasn't going swimming. Again, we didn't think much of it, until I could see that my mom was visibly worried. She pointed him out to me, 
and said that if he didn't leave within five minutes, we needed to go back to our rooms. Five minutes passed and he was still there, so we got our things and left. By then, it was close to eight. We had brought a rented movie to watch, so we planned to watch that and go straight to bed. I noticed that my mom was a little on edge because of the man watching us, and I got a little more worried myself too. Halfway through the movie, my mom got up to get in the shower. While she was in there, someone knocked on the door and said, Housekeeping, in a high-pitched voice. I thought it was weird that the cleaning staff would come this late, but we needed another towel, so I answered the door. I wish I hadn't been so stupid. It was the creepy man. He gave me a smile and a little wave. I just stood there, kind of motionless. My mind automatically went to the worst possible situation. Kidnapping, torture, etc. I heard the water in the shower turn off. He stood there as well for a moment, and then he spoke. How was your swim? At that moment, my mom came out of the shower, saw the man at the door, pulled me back, and slammed the door. She locked it, then she called the front desk from our hotel phone to report the guy. I told her to just call the police, but she didn't listen. She then requested we switch rooms. I then heard footsteps stomping down the hallway away from our room. Thankfully, the guy had left. After that, we switched hotel rooms and didn't see the guy again during our stay. For some context, my family and I did not have a happy home life. We often would move around every year, if not several times a year. My stepdad had a severe drinking problem, and my mom had varying levels of drug issues. This story takes place after we moved from North Carolina to Winslow, Arizona. I was just about 8 or 9 years old at the time. I never truly understood why we moved out that way. My mom said it was to visit her stepfather, whom we ended up living with for a few months, before leaving due to the violence. We're a family of five, and we eventually moved in and out of motel rooms for the remainder of our time in Arizona. My parents had a rule that we kids, my two brothers and myself, could not spend the day in the motel room. This rule had no exclusions despite Arizona being over 100 degrees outside most days. We would even have to eat our meals outside and had limited bathroom breaks. My brothers and I would often occupy our time seeing if the soda machines were left unlocked again or just baking in the sun until we were permitted to go to bed. If we were lucky, sometimes another kid would be living in the motel and we would try to get them to play with us. One of the longer staying residents was a girl named Daisy somewhere around my age. She was kind of a brat, but I was grateful for her company. I would often knock on her room door and ask her father if she can come out to play. On the day of the story, my brothers and stepfather were gone for some reason or another. This meant I was left alone outside. I eventually decided to try and get Daisy to come play again and started making my way across the dry empty parking lot to the room she shared with her father. As I was making my way over, I saw the window curtains move suddenly, as if someone were watching me approach. I paused and waited, just before stepping into the sidewalk right outside of Daisy's room, assuming it was her making her way outside to meet me. Just as I started to second guess what I had witnessed, Daisy's door swung open, and no one stepped out. Nervously, I called out Daisy's name. Someone did come out, but not Daisy. There in the doorway, and quickly approaching me, was a tall, straggly woman with messy and matted blonde hair. Her eyes were blue, which I had only noticed because of how intensely she stared. Her eyes were impossibly wide. Her fast approach scared me, and just as I turned and ran, I felt the woman's tight grip around my waist. I froze, shocked that a stranger would just grab onto me. As our eyes met again, she smiled with a toothy grin and said, I know you. I know who you are. You're a star. I know you. I know your destiny. You are star. You are destiny. I can show you. She would repeat the same phrase, 
never seeming to blink. As she began pulling me towards the room she came out of, I remember pulling and trying to yank my arm away from her, but her grip was too tight. I began to panic, not knowing how to make her let go. I started to scream at her, hoping to startle her, but she kept pulling me closer to her room. She suddenly tripped and fell, letting me go. I took the opportunity to try and get away from her, but she recovered quicker than I expected, and this time, she grabbed onto my ankle. Her new hold on me caused me to fall to my stomach. More desperate than ever, I began to scream and flail, trying to cause her to let go of me again, but she just took hold of my other ankle. Realizing I couldn't overpower her, I looked towards my family's room. I was so scared and I couldn't think clearly and just cried for my mother, hoping she'd hear me from inside the motel room. She never did. I just remember calling out to her, begging her to hear me, to help me. I suddenly felt the sidewalk scraping the skin of my stomach, causing me to realize how much further I was dragged from my motel room. I felt such despair and hopelessness. I began to mentally shut down and give up. Out of nowhere, I heard a man's voice yell out behind me. Hey, what are you doing? The woman's grip loosened just then, allowing me to kick her, knocking her back, and finally setting me free. I flipped onto my back and sat up, seeing Daisy's father emerge from the same room the woman came out of. He quickly made his way trying to comfort me and make sure I was okay. I was so confused and I can't even really remember what he said, but he was just begging me not to tell anyone what happened. He then moved away from me, grabbed the woman, and pushed her back into the motel room. I collected myself and ran to my family's room where my mom was relaxing and just watching TV. I explained to her what happened and she stormed out of the room to confront them. My memory is extremely fuzzy at this point. I was just terrified from the events. The cops were called by someone and I remember looking out of the window of my motel room and seeing the woman in the back seat of a cop car now pulling away. For the last time our eyes met, causing her to frantically ram herself against the window, screaming. Even though I couldn't hear what she said, I know she was trying to tell me again that she knew me. I don't know what her problem was, but she definitely had a few screws loose.